There is a place of longing and deprivation in you as a human being that you go from a place of I'm seeking God to get something from him to a place of I'm seeking God because I want him. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And if this is your first time watching, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Uwem Akpan. In today's video, I want to speak about how to seek first the kingdom of God. I grew up hearing a lot of things that made me have my own perception and belief about how to seek the kingdom of God and what it means to seek the kingdom of God. So at some point, it could look like God is using you getting the things that you need as a bait to make you seek his kingdom. But that's not true. God doesn't play games and he's not trying to use anything as a bait to get us to love him or to serve him or to do anything for him. Everything God does is because he has our best interests at heart. Seeking the kingdom of God First of all, is actually making God at the top of your list. Number one, seeking the kingdom of God is to prioritize God first. The popular Bible verse in which this is taken from is the Matthew 6, 3, which says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. In the previous verses of the Bible, Jesus was talking to the disciples regarding their anxiety about life and the things that they needed. And he says, I know these are the things that worldly people, people who do not know God, are seeking after. They are forcing after these things. They are curious of how to get these things. It could be in your area of finance, of career, of relationship, or any part of your life. Most times we find ourselves in the motion where we are kind of like seeking things, our career, and all other things. Your career is good. Having a good relationship is good. Having the good things of life that you need, the provision, the good house, it's good. But Jesus said the number one thing which you must prioritize is the kingdom of God. To seek first the kingdom of God is actually to put it first in order, first in time, first in place and in everything, like to make it of priority. If you check the life of Joseph in the Bible, the Bible keeps saying, and the Lord was with Joseph, and the Lord was with Joseph. That showed the longing and how Joseph prioritized God's kingdom, how he prioritized the presence of God, the dominion of God over his life over every area of his life. So if you allow God to have dominion over your life, which means he's going to influence the decisions you make in your life, to invade even the normal daily life you live and how you deal with people, how you treat people and how you do things in your life. And that is actually how to prioritize God. Like Proverbs says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So it's this life of you saying, God, you are my number one. And you don't need to allow your mind to go so far and say, how do I seek God first when I'm in trouble? The Bible says he's our nearest helper in times of trouble. It's because of the pollution of the society and culture and the world today that we may feel like, oh, if you seek God first when you're in trouble, he may not come early. But it's because you've not taken time to get into relationship with him to actually experience him at work in your life. You might try to do things and you only want to seek God when you get stuck. God should be your number one run to. If you're anxious about life, your career, your relationship, Seek ye first God. Let the presence of God be the number one longing in your life. The number one desire that you have. Let God be your number one priority. God does not ask you to seek him because it is a do this get that kind of relationship. Seeking the kingdom of God is for relationship, not a transaction. Because sometimes you go after God as if it's a transaction. God, I am seeking your kingdom. So make sure that you add these things that I need. And sometimes people just have the mindset and the motive of trying to seek God, serve God, do the things that honor God, and maybe live what they call a righteous life to get God to do something for them. Because the Bible promised that all other things shall be added. I think it's about relationship. When you seek after God, the more intimate you get with him, you understand that it's a father-child or son or daughter relationship, which means your father will always want to take care of you. Verse 32 says, the people of the world are forcing and seeking after these things. They are anxious about their life, but you, your heavenly father knows that you have need of these things. Your heavenly father knows that you need a good relationship. Your heavenly father knows that you need your finances to be in place. If you know that this is a relationship and not a transaction, you know that you are seeking him to become more intimate, not seeking him to get more things. It's not accumulation of things that you need or want. It's to become closer to him. When you desire to build a relationship, the more you seek to do things right, the more the relationship grows better and deeper. 
the Christian life that most people live is need-based. People only go after God because of what they need. People only serve God because they need something from Him. Which means that if they have no need, then they will have no need of God also. Which, that is really bad. If you don't seek to build a relationship with your father, or if you don't see him as your father, how would you expect him to treat you like family? If you don't see him as your father, how would you expect him to make provision for you when you have need of it? Which is why Jesus said, your heavenly father knows you need these things. But what you should focus on, what's more important, for you to do is to get closer, draw closer to me. Like the Bible says, if you draw nearer to me, I will draw nearer to you, which means it's in your hands. So if you don't choose him, you cannot build that relationship, which is why the Bible says that blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled, which means there's a place of longing and deprivation in you as a human being that you go from a place of, I'm seeking God to get something from him, to a place of I'm seeking God because I want him. Like David said in the Psalm, one thing about desire of the Lord and this alone will I seek that I may dwell in his presence. You know, in my life at some point, I had this belief regarding relationship because okay, growing up to see relationship go wrong, I've chosen the life of serving God, of walking according to the kingdom of God, you know, staying pure and having to practice chastity. But the problem with this, I was thinking that if I become chaste and pure, that that will make God reward me with a good life partner or a good relationship. God opened my eyes to this scripture in Proverbs 19 verse 14 that says that houses and riches can be inherited from the father, but a prudent or a good wife is a gift from the Lord. That actually shook me because I was like, how do you deserve a gift? A gift is not like a reward. And all that I was trying to do was trying to seek it as if it was a reward. Like, God, I'm doing this. I'm living a good life. I'm not sleeping around. I'm not doing like every other person. I'm trying to be chaste so you can give me a good relationship. So when that scripture hit me, it drew me back to this idea of seeking first the kingdom of God. Staying chaste and pure is actually good. But then the motive behind my actions were wrong. So God opened my eyes to tell me that a good wife is not a reward for you staying pure or being chaste. So this actually made me think deeper and I was like, had it been I just stayed pure, stayed away from fornication and all of that, and then God would bring a good wife to me. Would I have been in a place or a healthy place to be able to handle this gift that God gives me. So it got me to realize that God will only give you a gift when he can trust you that you can handle this gift. God can give you so much more than you can handle. He can only give you because he knows your capacity. It dawned on me that it's not just about staying pure. As much as staying pure is good and godly, but there are things to do. There are things to learn. There are things to grow into that will make me be ready for this gift from God. Because God is not stingy, neither is he evil, that he will give me something bad. He wants to give me that good spouse that I need because I desire that. But one thing he doesn't want me to do is to idolize that. Because I know we live in a culture that Today, we idolize a lot of things. We make an idol of so many things from the standpoint of career, of relationship, of friendship. Anything you put at the center of your heart apart from God becomes an idol to you. That thing starts controlling you, whether it's money or whatever it is. And God says, I don't want anything to be in control of you. Seek first my kingdom, prioritize my kingdom, and know this is about relationship. My third and final point on how to seek the kingdom of God and what it means, God knows your need already. He wants you to come to a place of being conscious that he is your source, such that you can know him deeper. He knows that you have need for a good relationship. He knows that you have need or the desire to have these riches, to be wealthy, to have your finances in place, to have everything that you need. All those desires are good. God does not counsel them out. He does not say that they are bad things. But he's only saying you have to know the difference between a resource and a source. I am your source. All these things are the things that I bless you with. If you concentrate on the blessing and forget the blesser, you are making an idol of the blessing. In Romans, Paul talked about it that some people have forgotten about the creator and worship the creature instead of the creator. And God does not want you to come to a place of worshiping the gift that he gives you and making it an idol and forget him that gave you the gift. I hope this video has been beneficial to you and you've learned something from it. I would like you to give this video a thumbs up if you love it or if you've learned something from it. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel to see more updates and videos that will be uploaded. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section what you know about the kingdom of God, what you believe about it, your experience in seeking for the kingdom of God. 
I'd like to hear that in the comment section. See you in the next video. Don't forget to click the subscribe button.